Tracy. Thank you. Edward Hartley Dewart. Edward Hyde DeWert, who uh, wrote the first anthology, wrote a national literature is an essential document for the mental progress of a country. It is the expression of the intellectual life of a nation, a link of national unity, and a guide for the national energy. To give you an idea of the direction our national energy has taken since Canada celebrated its 100th birthday and the type of national unity that we might envision in 2017, we might examine our literature, our national literature, since 1967. Today, I will limit myself to a short history of the uh, poetry in de, Canada, de Anglophone de poetry. One of the main tenets comes from the studies of poetry. In 1965, Norton Fry, reading E.J. Pride and Margaret Allison, described the Canadian imagination as a garrison mentality where communities erect fortresses against threats, and the threats were uh, from the uh, Aboriginals and from uh, Americans. In 1972, Margaret Atwood Reg, the point by John Newlidge, and news uh, at the beginning of her thesis that Canadian unity was a victim concentrated on survival and not on triumph. Only when at home, in my $60 a month slum, or to feel like a Canadian, only when kissing someone else's bum? Non, ces images de Canada apparaissent de l'étranger. This Canadian image en train d'âger. Sans doute, vous savez bien que quand le Canada a adopté une politique culturelle, il a commencé à se voir comme une politique culturelle diverse. On commence à se voir comme une politique culturelle diverse. On commence à se voir comme une politique culturelle diverse. New Christs with our beautiful women. Ça c'était de la poésie de Michael Ondaatje, mais toujours à Sri Lanka. Et dans une de ses premières poèmes, John Brand a écrit. And in one of his first poems, John Brand wrote, "I give you these epigrams, Toronto, these winter fragments and stark white papers, because you mothered me, because you held me at a distance I expected." Le modèle multiculturel The multi a multicultural model was seen by many writers as a way to allow immigrants to do, who have just arrived to participate in a game that's already begun, the rules of which are still the feel of one of the two solitudes. And they've played that game very well. But what we've seen also is that many new voices coming into the literary field was from Canadians that have been here for a long time. My name with a sigh. I écris Fred Waugh. Waugh, notre poète laureate actuel, poète laureate, was born in Saskatoon in the 70s, and he was only starting to write the experiences he lived within BC as a boy with the Canadian and Chinese heritage. Origins, magnetic lines across an ocean, migrations of genetic spume, or holes, dark mysteries, which I carry further into the world. The work of writers like me, who do literature and poetry, make it a space to reflect on the strange ecology between the territory where we grew, the language we learn, the history of colonialism, and the self-identity. English is my mother tongue, is my father tongue, is lang, lang, language, anguish, anguish, English is a foreign anguish, écrivain Nourbe C. Philip, du mauvais accord entre son idée et la diaspora 
et la langue européenne dans laquelle uh, regarding elle the differences exprimer. between the English and uh, European the language. Life, who said, don't insult me when I proudly wrote my name in Japanese. Écriva Joy Kagawa dans son poème, What do I remember about the evacuation? Je me demande si je devrais inclure des écrits Should I include uh, native uh, writers in the voices of uh, multiculturalism? I, is it because if we started building new myths, we would have been welcome, but if we had our, those myths dating from before Confederation, before the idea of Canada, it was not obvious that we would be invited to take part in that great project of a mosaic. How long have I known you, O Canada? A hundred years, yes, and many selenum more. And today, when you celebrate your hundred years, I am sad for all the Indian people throughout this land. Ainsi écrivait Dan George en 1967. That's what Dan George wrote in his poem Lament for Confederation 1967. He read that before 35,000 people at the Empire Stadium here in Vancouver. The work of the Poets is colonization and identity. And the young poets who want to reflect on Canada in, in 2017 will have to know that they do it in the context of climate change. They want to think uh, scales that go beyond the nation because wind, water, and forests also exist at those uh, scales. And in that goat, we want to Look at the elders of the First Nation, hoping that they will share their knowledge and will uh, help us in survival. As we approach 2017, Canadian poets are again preoccupied not by survival uh, of uh, the, the culture, but the ecology is what uh, worries them. The experience of Canadian identity over the last 50 years shows that garrisons, borders, and some types of national identity can turn out to be our greatest threat than our protection. What we see now in the work of young poets is that they think of the way new ecological models represent the way ideas travel and a feeling of community that spread. A recent development in uh, ecological writing is a type of right source poetry uh, made possible by social media uh, spreading poets written by communities. By Sachiko Murakami, and any can go online and read original poems, and the finished project is a document of regeneration. Angela Rawlings, a Kenyan poet based in Iceland, invites poets all over the world to share in competition elements of limited duration. And with Twitter, a long poem on a bird that's threatened can be written by 30 people in one hour. Not survival, but ecological survival. We have to sensitize. Thinking ahead to 2017, I suggest we get inspired by the story of our own progress in literature to do two things. One, speak with ourselves. Artists and writers of every region can take apart, rebuild, and create a new archive of stories of the interdependence between Aboriginal and Canadian identities. Give all ide Canadians an opportunity through crowdsourced art projects to learn Kwinitsa Shwakloan and more than that of the Aboriginal languages of the land that they live on. Two, to speak out externally with the world. In 2017, I'd like to see Canadian artists, writers, as well as other curators, empowered to design these crowdsourced works that create, in the moment of the art making, 
communities beyond national borders. Thank you.